Perfect. Hello, and welcome back to Agatha Christie, the ABC Murders. And we left off with the second murder, uh, beginning with B. And we're going to jump back in. We had some hard, um, what are they called, like puzzles to do near the end of that last one. So hopefully there aren't too many. I think I've finished with this subject. Yes, we finished the music puzzle. And there was something in the um, recording. Are we done with all the grey cells? I think so. Um, notebook. Let's just have a quick... So, the first murder was Alice Asher. And the second murder was Betty Bernard. Uh, she was a singer and a waitress, we've just found out. The first one with Alice Asher is kind of like we didn't solve it, but we're on... We're, we're trying to, shall we say. I'm gonna, let me just... My mic's a little bit loose. That's better. Um, so yeah, we're trying to figure that one out, but I think it's all just going to connect up to the same guy, probably, who or gal, who is uh, sending the letters for the ABC murders. So Alice Asher, Betty Bernard, Franz Asher, Mary Drower, Miss Merrin, Nancy. But so all of these. Ah, uh, Megan Bernard is the sister. She's a bit sus of the person who got murdered. There's no real order to that. Continue questioning Megan. So there was something in the recording that, um... It looks like this woman is single. I swear but she has feelings song. for someone. But apparently not. Eyes brimming with tears. She's looking at a photograph of Betty and Donald. Oh, and she's seen that way. Okay. Uh, there was. She is looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she's studying in this manner? Okay, she, she, she had the hots for her. Um, for her uh, sister's fiance. Oh, do we have a new. Yes, we do. So, what had Betty planned to do with her evening? Betty used to go out a great deal. There's a missing clue. Okay. There's a lot of visitors this time of year. Betty had probably planned to meet someone that evening. And there's two missing clues. Okay, so we don't have enough to fill that in yet because it's one of those two missing clues. But let's, um, let's talk to Megan and see what she has to say for herself. They made the perfect couple, am I correct? Yes, in a way. She was pretty and he... Well? He's a bright man with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always attentive and generous. Oh, a true gentleman. I hear a note of envy in your voice. You must have heard wrong. Uh, ask if Donald was in love with Betty. Ask if Donald was jealous. Why would Donald be jealous? Oh, jealous of the people who were asking her out at, like, the cafe and stuff. I'm going to go with in love. Donald appeared to be very much in love with your sister. Yes, he was mad about her. Mad, you say? Being madly in love can often be destructive, and Mr. Fraser was known for being jealous, I believe. No more than average. Men are always slightly possessive, especially when they are with a pretty woman. Let's ask her to cooperate. I am not your enemy, Mademoiselle Bernard. And you are not my friend either, Mr. Poirot, sir. Yes, but your lies are not helping Mr. Fraser, or you for that matter. Uh, inform her that the case is complex. Ask her why she's protecting Betty's fiancé. I'm going to go for why is she protecting. I know that Fraser was jealous, but I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Protect him? I hope you're not suggesting... 
that you are Fraser's accomplice? There is nothing to suggest that, at least not yet. It would appear that your sister's murder is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man, slightly reserved too, and as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. He could be so violent that he was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. But they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying, One day... One day... Well? He'd commit murder. Okay, that's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> um... Ask if Donald really could have killed Betty. Ask if she fears that Donald is a suspect. Let's go with X. Do you think that is what happened? No, Mr. Poirot, I don't believe that. You yourself said he may be a recidivist madman. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. I'm not sure if I did it all right there. I'm not sure if... The questioning is the harder bit, I think. Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Au revoir, mademoiselle. My deepest condolences to your parents. Of course, Mr. Poirot. And don't be too hard on Don. He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, so we must have unlocked the others. Betty was seeing other men as well as Donald. Betty lied to Donald about where she was, what she was planning to do the day before. Nope, I didn't like that, so... Betty lied to Donald because she had a date with another man. Did Betty know her assailant? Bet the man seduced Betty before taking her to the beach where he strangled her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay. Um, what is Megan Barnard's behaviour hiding? Oh, she's a soul heir. Love the sister. An intelligent woman. Bet you was a good singer. There you go. Megan has a soft spot for Donald. I wonder if you can get those wrong. Did Megan Barnard have motive for killing her sister? Soul air. Megan was jealous of Betty because she was seeing other men as well as Donald. Okay. So we've put together quite a few clues. None of them really point us towards who the murderer is. And it, like... It doesn't make sense if the murderer is just a random person. It should be connected to the original. You've seen right? Fraser, Hastings. What is your feeling? He's a big chap. Fragile isn't exactly the word that springs to mind. I talked to his landlady before seeing him. She went to bed at 11. Fraser wasn't home yet. Bien. Megan Barnard said he is a reserved character but with a nasty temper. We will see if this is the case. Let's 
go talk to Donald. I mean, is the... It's Sharon Green. Is there something... Okay, we've just got notes added. Let's just go through them. So, yeah. Ah, okay, we've got another one. Did Donald have motive? What is that? In and out, okay. Um, there was a braided silk belt. Betty used to go out a great deal. Marks on neck. Two murders were premeditated. This is what I'm saying. They've been premeditated and carried out by the same murderer, so it couldn't have been Donald, unless he somehow knew... Um, was it Alice Asher? I think her name was. So we put that. And that. The motive for killing Betty was jealousy. Because that's the easiest one to get rid of. Did he have an alibi? That's probably a missing clue. So we can move on to that later. Once we've spoken to him about his alibi. Although, we we were given that alibi by Hastings just now, weren't we? Ten ego points. I don't know what the ego points are doing, but we have lots. Alright, let's have a chat with this guy. No option to look at him or anything. How do you do, Mr. Fraser? You Hercule Poirot? Mr. Hastings said you wanted to speak to me. Yes. I know that it may not be at the right time, but I would like to ask you a few questions. I think the audio for my Xbox might be a bit high. I'm just going to put it down a touch. Let's see if that looks... It's going into the orange and red at times. Okay, now we can observe him. This man looks suspicious. Oh, he's drinking. Oh. Okay, that's not the suspiciousness that we're looking for. Dark circles under his eyes. White horse whiskey. Is it what he's wearing? Where? Leave me alone. Oh, jeez. Moody. Crumpled clothes. He's, he's had better days. Donald Fraser is in a terrible state. As if he hadn't slept all night. And he's drinking white horse. Is white horse bad? Leave me alone. Okay. Time to just have a little chat with our man, Donald Fraser. Tell me that it's a mistake. That Betty isn't dead. Sadly... Your lady friend has been murdered, Mr. Fraser. Oh, Betty, if only you'd listened. Ask if he saw Betty yesterday afternoon. Say that Betty only ever did as she pleased. Ask what happened would have happened if she'd listened to him. I mean, I feel like we start off easy with if he saw Betty yesterday afternoon. That We don't want to go in too hard, do we? Did you visit Betty yesterday afternoon? No, I haven't seen Betty for two days. I was at the office yesterday afternoon. Can you prove that? Of course. But why this question? Betty died yesterday evening, didn't she? Um. Ask him if he likes White Horse Whiskey. Tell him that he's a suspect. Should we just ask him if he likes the whiskey? Yesterday... A guest came to the ginger cat alone and ordered oh, a white course, horse whiskey. That. And by the look of it, you also appear to be fond of this brand. Yes, it's a good whiskey and not cheap. I only drink it on special occasions. Or tragic ones. I understand. Do you know what Betty's plans were yesterday evening? She said she was having dinner with her sister. Um... Damn, I, I do find these questions quite hard to figure out which is the right one. I'm going to say her sister was in London. Or why he believed her. Let's go why he believed and her. And you believe? 
And why not, sir? She was my fiancée. That did not stop her from lying to you before. Betty was not a bad girl, but she did like to take advantage of her success with men. How dare you sully her memory! Um... Inform him to, that there's a killer to find or apologize for being abrupt. What's the best approach of him? He seems agitated. Do we try and calm him down? Or do we go straight to the point? Let's go. Let's try and calm him down, maybe. Please excuse me if I appear to be brutal. I understand that this is a difficult time for you. So you understand why I don't feel like talking, Mr. Poirot? Oh, did I just mess that up? Ah, I knew I'd find you here, Poirot. I thought the victim's young man was here. Yes, is all yours, Chief Inspector. I think I might. Let us now try out. and get our brain cells to work. Oh, Chief Mente, romantic confessional. Half of the interrogations. Okay, we might be making our way through this quite quickly. Alibi. Does not have an alibi. Does Donald have motive for all the murders? Well, I think it's probably that one, right? No? Donald may have killed Betty, but he does not have motive for Miss Ash's murder. Which is what I said before. Doesn't connect if there's someone who's doing these as like more of a serial killer. Another achievement. We're absolutely raking them in. Answered half of the questions to the little grey cells. Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extremely jealous. You are very skilled at summing up. And yet you haven't asked Jap to arrest him. It is too soon. But I agree. Without the letters announcing the crimes, Fraser would already be behind bars. Bon, I think we have enough elements. Let's reconstruct the events at the scene of the crime. I can't imagine how the murderer wasn't seen, though. Surely she must have struggled. Let us try and imagine the scene. Maybe she was dragged there, but then, like, there weren't any drag signs that she, her body was dragged there. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number five. Well, I thought they were in number six. Both of them walk slowly to hut number six. And then she changes. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a coat. The killer tries to remove his victim's belt. She panics and tries to stop him. No, that add up. She runs away, pursued by her assailant. No, there is no sign of a chase. Things must have happened differently. Let us sink again, mon cher. Okay, we failed that. Let's try again. The belt didn't come off just yet. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Oh, Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number five. Aunt number six. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number six. Then she changes. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a code. Right, so what are the options here? Advance, because I don't there wasn't signs of a struggle, was there? They keep walking. Then she removes a belt. 
The murderer moves behind her and then attacks her by surprise. The body falls, lifeless, on the sand. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Reconstruction success. Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser. But by signing his crimes, the murderer is making sure he's accused. In a way, it is very generous of him. Generous? The murderer seduced Betty in order to lure her to the beach and kill her. Indeed, the young woman was certainly careless, but not stupid enough to follow a stranger. What are you planning to do, Poirot? Return to London, mon cher Hastings. So wait, if she wasn't stupid enough to follow a stranger, why didn't... Why did she... So she knew the person? Is that what they're trying to say? Let's just go back to London, I guess. I don't think... Yeah, we've done 7 out of 7 for this, so it's... One an achievement. Oh, wow, that's uh, delayed. Um, okay. So, no closer to finding the murderer and two people are dead. Poirot is... Not having a good time. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. I'm coming, Poirot. According to the guide, the next train departs shortly. Is it this way? Wait, how do we get to... Ah, here. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. So the next place will begin with a C. And the person's name will be beginning with a C, both first and last name. Jap has decided to reveal details to the press. The alphabet murder is now famous. It is not a bad idea. The more people who know, the greater our chances of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. Okay. <laughs> Shouldn't have had that curry, mate. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Once he gets to see, will he stop? Good hunting. Did you hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Yard. Um, let's ask what the date is. By the way, Hastings, what day is it? Well, looking at the calendar, it's the 30th. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. Mon Dieu, it is already 10 o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. Okay. Do I, do I have a phone? Call Scotland Yard. Is, is there a phone in the house? Like, back in the day, they didn't have phones in the houses, did they? Oh, I got Pyramid... You finished the Bexhill Inquiry. Okay. Daily Flicker, July 30, 1935. ABC. Okay. In this issue, we are publishing provocative letters sent by the killer to... We don't need to see that. Oh, one minute. There was two observations. Daily Flicker, July the 26, 1935. The Bexhill Horror. Is that a phone? Yeah, looks like it. Hello, Jap. We received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. 
Call me back. It is not a good time. Um, let's put the fan on. Ah, some cool air. What was that noise? What do we have to do now? Prepare to leave for Churston. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. Order is essential. These things, order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. All the same, it really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Badly closed toothpaste, unprotected bottles, badly folded pajamas, a bath towel. And odd socks, Hastings. What are you at playing at, my man? Voila! It only took a minute. Much better. Poirot, you were right. Falcon's eye. Half the observations. I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Churston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. Compare the new letter. So... Flippin' heck, we're making achievements all over the place. I've tidied it up twice. Do, can we... Do we compare the letters here? It is not a good time. How do we compare the letters? Poor Mr. Poirot. Not so good at this little criminal matter. Yeah, we've already heard the letter, so. Nothing on the back. Why doesn't seem to do much? Use. How do, where are the other letters? I lock my revolver in this drawer. I've not used it in a very long time. Okay, well, there's a revolver there if we need it. Um, where are the other letters? We did have them on our inventory, but they're not there anymore. I do find it funny that there's a murder about to happen and they're relying on the railway. Rather than, like, maybe getting a car or a horse and cart or something. Hastings photo album. He is very proud of his bag. He's a hunter. We've missed the 645 train, but we have plenty of time to catch the night train. Maybe I'd need to talk to Hastings about it. Hastings, it would appear that you are getting slightly thin on top. Really? I hadn't noticed. It's a bit harsh. Damn. Hmm. <sighs> In his haste, Hastings tore the envelope. Observe. 
not known at White Horse Mansions. Okay, but nothing there just yet. letter and the two pieces of envelopes. What's the, what's the... Compare the new letter with the other letters from the ABC. I think you have to do it here, don't you? Right. Oh, now it Let works. us compare this new letter with you the saw, second one. I tried to do that a couple of times and it didn't work, so I think... Let us examine this more closely. The, the, the I is definitely... Uh, that trigger? Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. Uh, let's have a look. What about the... Let us examine the characters in this world. The numbers, maybe? Question marks, maybe? Maybe yours? And put best wishes last Let time. us examine the characters in this world. Oh, I just realized what yes, I'm supposed to. Yes, this eye is weird. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defect. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Uh, lowercase w is kind of smudgy or whatever. Hmm, the w is not printed properly. Of course, the w characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Other defects. I think maybe. Let us examine the characters uh, in this world. Uh, what are they called? Apostrophes? No, I already established that the letter I was crushed in the two letters. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Hmm. Yes. The A appears to be quite unusual. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, brain cell time. Let's try and figure out what any of that means. Why does the mur murder want us so late? Jeff has decided to reveal details to the press. The alphabet murderer is now famous. Let's see who sent on the right at the right date. Whiskey piece of envelope with a wrong address. Maybe the wrong address. Letter arrived late because of an error in the address. Aha. The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Poirot, the telephone. It must be Jap. Off we go. I am just quickly going to go double check something. I will be back in a second.
Okay, back. Just I thought I'd left the front door open. And then I was like, I can't forget it. Uh, let's answer the phone. Let's see what Yap wants. I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark. The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. Off to Churchton we go. Or Churston, not Churston. This is very fancy, isn't it? The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poirot? You go, my friends. I will come soon. So wait, did you get the place wrong? It's not actually Churston, it's somewhere else. Prepare to leave for Churston. Oh damn, that's a lot of blood. An ABC guide. The murderer's customary signature. Covered in blood this time. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean incision, a professional murder. Apart from the wound to the throat, the body is untouched. No cuts, no bruises. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical shape to Rhea, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. I don't know what that means, but maybe like the spray. Jap has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth. What we got here? Oh, a signet ring. On the inside. I don't think there's anything important about that. Maybe there is. Is it saying that one out zero out of four? I need it to say one out of four. A signeting, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. watch an oriental dragon it's an old piece much older than a pocket watch on which it was fastened I have no idea what any of this stuff means at the moment it, like these words don't seem to be linked I'm sure it'll be very clever when we figure it out you have to find just the perfect like angle it is pointless there is keys. I'm not sure what what's pointless about them. Money, which means he wasn't mugged. There is money. And his passport, which they could have taken and like sold on or something. Come on. What's that sheep sound in the background? Come on. There you go. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. Thank That is everything. Oh, what's over here? Seagull. This place is very calming. A 
rabbit hole. Picturesque rock, a seagull. And I'm guessing these flowers, wild flowers. The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. Oh, so like they would have known he would have been here because it's where he stopped all the time. So I'm still examining the crime scene. Retired doctor specializing in... Oh, it's kind of irony. He says he specializes in throats. He's had his throat cut. Get it. Took me a while to get there. The body is just in front of a bush. One of the only bushes in the surrounding area. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. So, someone hid behind a bush. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Um, there was a wound with a clear outline. Okay, what was Sir Kamoku's position when he was killed? Had his back to the bush. Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut the throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood over a range of more than one meter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Did he? Well, I'm guessing not if he was. Uh, he didn't put up a fight, he didn't, his wound, it, it suggests that he had his knife, his throat cut from behind. Didn't, it, that's what happened with the girl as well though, she, she might not, she saw the person because she knew them, but she was strangled from behind. It's the M.O. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. Uh, carefully planned, for sure. The killer has prepared his crime very carefully. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. The murder was very violent. Because there wasn't any... The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. Okay, I think that's... Yeah, I just have to question the victims of the Levere. And I think we got all those deductions correct, so we're good to go for the questioning. Because like, sometimes I think in these sort of games, if you get don't get all of the clues right, the questioning just goes a lot worse. So we should be alright. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Hello. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. I find it hard to digest. A bit TMI there. Okay. It is not the right time. We're we not going to observe. Her? Let's observe her first. There is something elegant about her. Again, Poirot being a bit creepy. Understated makeup. Well tailored and very classical style blouse. Oh, and the the. Guy had a dragon on his watch, and she's got a dragon. Broken. She has good taste, except perhaps in a choice of jewel. I wonder what the dragon means. Please excuse me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. We'll talk to you later, I guess. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity to question him. It is a once in a life. My brother's wife is gravely ill. 
You will probably want to question her, but I fear that it won't be possible today. Um, accuse him of preventing Lady Kark from, uh... Okay, we're not going to accuse. We'll either insist or be understanding. Let's insist. I insist, Mr. Clark. Please allow me to remind you that this is a murder inquiry. Unfortunately, she is much too ill. She doesn't even know her husband is dead. I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid it's out of the question. Of course, I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. Uh, it was a dark night? Was it a dark night? It was a new moon. I took a lantern. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. Hmm. <gasps> Miss Clark! Oh! Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair! I have to help Miss Grey get her up. <laughs> what an assumption. Hastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. But, Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... I take full responsibility. All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. <laughs> Doesn't look sus that much, does he? Look at that. Okay, what we got? What we got? Teapot. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. Yeah, he looks like a dragon. A turtle. Oh no, it's a puzzle. A tiger. Something opens on this damn table, doesn't it? A crane? There's an order that you press these in or something. A dragon. The dragon's gotta be the last one you click in. It is an emperor. His place at the center of the table is probably symbolic. Comside's private collection purchases since 1920. The catalogue for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. Interesting. I'm not going to leave now. This is definitely a puzzle. Oh. Turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. I have. Okay. But instead of trying to figure it out, let's, um... Yeah, that's fine. I haven't done anything to it. Alright. Let's have a look at this table then. So we've got all of the dots pointing in. And at the head of the dragon we have the crane. At the right of the dragon we've got the tiger. At the foot of the dragon we've got the turtle. And at the left of the dragon, we've got the dragon. Let's see if that uh, helps us in any way. 
turtle, the dragon, the crane and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. So all of the dots need pointing. expecting to change so okay so we in between there's different colors yeah I'm gonna have to go back and have a look I don't see any colors they have some very valuable objects here they have some very value. On that one. Over this one. What are we looking at here? Compass, point to the thals. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC. Purchased in Hong Kong, 1935. So a compass that points to the south. Oh, is that it? Okay. Let's go have a look at this one. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. Traditional Chinese map. Facsimile. South is on the top of the map. So, something to do with south. For sure. I am not smart enough for these sort of... Uh, these sort of puzzles. Turtle, the dragon, the crane and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. Ah, yes, okay. What was it? It was crane at the head. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. Perfect. All the ones have dots pointing in. can't have the same colour, they all had the same colour. I do not know. They're in the right place, I think. Hmm. I'm not sure. Got the animals in the right place. But we've got to change the colours underneath. The dragon's fine, you can't move that. Trying to like see if there's anything I'm missing. I 
there's nothing. Oh, hang about. <laughs> there's colors right there. So it needs to be white, red, blue, black. What was it again? So white and red. So red needs to go on the top. Blue needs to go here. Black needs to go here. Okay. So if I swap. Oh, do, oh they just need to match the color that they already are. Maybe. White is on this side, red, black is on the... Okay. So black needs to be at the bottom. There go. Um, white needs to be on the right here. So we need to change the bottom to white. Yeah. And then red needs to be the top. We've got the right red there. We just need to change the top color to red. I think I had a bang. Oh man. Could it be this couple? That was that was difficult. This is interesting. We've got a letter. Oh, we got achievement. Samurai mustache, love it. What we got in the letter? Ernest Luggin, MD, Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD, Comsite, Chester, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case. So I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Your sincerely, Ernest Look. Okay, well that's a bit depressing. What we got here? Knives. These daggers oh, are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Are you sure? Because there's a missing one. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. Intense music. Jeez. This porcelain is remarkable. Is it old? It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait, let me find the reference. It is not the right time. Just gonna observe her again. She appears to be very flustered. Her and her brother, and the brother getting a little. She's bit. unable to hide her emotion, and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here, teapot with black dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. It is a rare piece with unusual colors. Indeed. You have a good knowledge of art history. She just read it from a book. Acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection and choose his new acquisitions. Fantastical. I've discussed porcelain with Border Grey. Um, ask if he gave her gifts. Ask if she was embarrassed to be a, the service of an elderly man. Ask what the relationship was with her employer. 
Did you have a good relationship with your employer? He treated me well, and I am sorry for his death. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. Uh, where she was at the time. And her version of the facts. Let's see where she was at the time. What were you doing yesterday evening at the time of the murder? I was sleeping. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with them lanterns and they found the body. Uh, what she thinks about Franklin, ask her reasons for her aversion to Franklin, ask if she was in a relationship with him, what she thinks about him. What are your feelings about Franklin Clark? What an odd question. Of course I think he's a good man. He's energetic, nice, very sociable. Miss Gray, if I may be so bold, please do not take offence. My friend has rather unusual methods, but all he wants is to find the murderer. Yes, I understand. I must rest. Please excuse me. Earlier, you asked me to watch the living room door for you. I don't wish to be indiscreet, but sometimes a gentleman stumbles upon a secret without intending to. That is sometimes the case. And I saw Franklin Clark kissing Miss Gray at the foot of the stairs. Do you think this is a common occurrence? No, I saw emotion, intensity. I think it was their first kiss. Well done, mon ami. Well spotted. However, I don't think I completely understand this business. Why did Sir Carmichael not defend himself? He appeared to have been active and strong. The murderer did not give him a chance. Let us try and reconstruct the scene. Boom, we're already at the reconstruction. Damn. We're smashing through these, aren't we? Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. No, he waits. Because... The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. He needs to get behind him. Admire? Um, oh wait, he does admire. He turns around, doesn't he? Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. I thought it meant the murderer admires him. Like, oh. uh, attack from the left or from the right? Oh, one minute. The right. The killer leaves his hiding place on the right hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Monsha Hastings. Hey, nice. That is exactly what happened. First time. Just a minute, I'm getting Alexander dressed. Alexander Bonaparte, ah, uh, ABC. Alexander Bonaparte Cross is the murderer. He's a very odd looking man. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes, indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer, imagine that. Mm. Mr. Cast, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies. My throat is burning. My head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. What's the blue box? Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. What? 
And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me as things intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah, is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. Oh, damn. They're here already. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. Uh, you've got a modifiable object. To modify an object, select it in your inventory, then observe it by pressing Y, then press RB. Oh, Chief Mente again. Finish the first inquiry at Churston. Oh. Have discovered Fora's Grey's intentions. Oh, it just does that again and again. Oh, okay, so we've got now got a spring. Whatever we all use that for. Right. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. I've only done an hour, but I am... Um... <sighs> so basically, I've got ulcerative colitis, right? And a few days ago, I... Uh, so one of my foods that I can't eat is tomatoes. So I looked up why. And... Uh, Basically, tomatoes are of the nightshade family, and some people have a reaction to nightshade, which is very bad. Um, and I'm one of those people. And it basically makes my colon, stomach lining, whatever, bleed, which is not nice. It's not fun. But um, I had a crisp, just one crisp, right? And then I was like, oh, I haven't had these crisps before. Let me just double check. But after, when I was eating that first crisp, and it had tomato powder in, which has absolutely wrecked me. So I thought I was going to try and stream, but I just don't think I'm going to last the two hours. I've been on pretty rubbish. So I'm going to finish there. I, I'm glad I got the, the next murder done. And I think probably next week we'll finish this. Um, this, like, actual game, I think. Because we've got all of the people together. We're then going to be trying to find the... Uh, the actual murderer um, and it, I think that's going to be like the, the final act which we're probably in so we'll, we'll just have to see what happens next week but thank you for watching uh, remember to like and subscribe and I will see you when I see you